This video is brought to you by JetBrains PHP Storm. One of the most important soft skills we can have as developers is being able to communicate how our code works. Other developers can dive into our code to see how it works, but this can be time consuming and our stakeholders most likely won't be able to do that. What we need is some way to communicate the logic of our code in a standard way so anyone can understand it quickly. Flowcharts are one way that we can communicate this and more. In this video, we'll discuss what flowcharts are, some important flowchart symbols, and how to generate them so that by the end of this video, you'll be able to use them to communicate your next awesome idea. Hello developers and welcome to the PHP Architect channel. If this is your first time here, my name is Scott Keck Warren, and on this channel, we discuss a wide variety of topics related to the PHP ecosystem. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our latest videos when they're published. At a very basic level, flowcharts are graphical representations of algorithms or processes. They use standardized symbols to depict different elements and flow of control. As developers, we'll use flowcharts to describe how our algorithms work, but they can also be used to describe how troubleshooting steps or even an onboarding process for a new employee. Flowcharts provide several benefits. First, they help us analyze and identify potential issues or inefficiencies in our code before we even start writing it. Secondly, they assist in designing complex algorithms by breaking them down into smaller, manageable steps. Lastly, flowcharts make it easier to collaborate with other developers and stakeholders, as they provide a clear visual representation of the logic. Let's take a look at some of the more common flowchart symbols and how we'll use them. The first element we'll discuss is the start and end symbols. This is used to indicate the beginning or the end of a flowchart or process. It's represented using an oval. Now to connect all of our elements, we're going to use arrows. The arrows will indicate the direction of travel in our flowchart, and ideally, the lines won't cross to make sure it's as easy as possible to read. To describe actions or operations, we're going to use a rectangle symbol. This might be collecting data from a file, building an object, or performing some action on our data. The input and output phases of the flowchart are represented using a parallelogram. Now decisions are one of the most important things we'll need in our flowchart. We use a diamond shape to represent decision points in our flowcharts. As developers, we'll use these all the time to describe common flow statements. For example, this is an if-else block, and this is a loop. The final symbol we'll discuss today is the connector symbol, which is used to connect different parts of the flowchart that are located on separate pages or sections. Connection symbols are drawn using circles. Let's go over some best practices for creating effective flowcharts. The first thing is to keep it simple. The goal is to communicate a process, so we want to make sure we use clear and concise symbols and avoid unnecessary complexity. Include comments to better improve the understanding of the flowchart. Make sure you use appropriate connectors and symbols. By using random symbols, it makes it harder for others to read the diagram when they need it. As always, there's already a standard, so we should learn it and use it and not create a new standard. Finally, make sure you validate and test your flowcharts by testing it against real world scenarios. Nothing is worse than having a wrong flowchart. Flowcharts themselves provide no requirements for how we generate them, so we have a lot of options. At the lowest level of technology, we can create our flowcharts using pen and paper or a whiteboard. Whiteboards are an excellent option if you're brainstorming with a group of people, and pen and paper are great for quickly working something out. Now, both of them suffer from the fact that it's hard to change our flowcharts as we come up with modifications, so they can get a little messy. The next level up is to use a program to draw the flowcharts. We can use word processing tools to generate basic flowcharts, and there are even programs like Visio, Lucidcharts, and Diagrams.net that are specific for drawing diagrams. Again, these are awesome tools for people to use, but still suffer from some drawbacks. The biggest is that the files that these programs generate can be a challenge to manage using source control and tend to take a fair amount of effort to add and remove steps to make them look nice. If you've ever inserted an image into a Word document, you might know how quickly it could destroy the formatting on the entirety of the document. Now, if you couldn't tell, I have another solution, and that is to use a tool to generate the flowcharts from some kind of a text document that would provide us with an easy way to define what our flowchart will look like without actually having to worry about laying it out. Then we can easily include it as part of our source control as it uses plain text to define the file. We can even embed it into other documents that support it. We'll discuss that solution after this word from our sponsor. PHP Storm is a cutting edge IDE tailored specifically for PHP and web developers. If you haven't tried it before, or it's been a while since you used it last, now is the perfect time to check it out. 
PHP Storm recently received significant performance enhancements and has an ever-expanding feature set. I'm a recent convert to PHP Storm and I love it. One of my favorite features is the ability to create a scratch file to quickly test something in isolation from the rest of our project. If we're testing PHP code, it will even run that code on multiple versions of PHP using 3v4l.org. Curious to see if it's the right fit for you? Head over to jetbrains.com slash phpstorm to learn more and try it out with a free 30-day trial. Code smarter, not harder. Now the solution to all of our problems from before come in the form of the syntax created by the mermaid.js project. Mermaid.js provides a command line tool that we can use to convert a text file containing markdown inspired text into all kinds of diagrams. You want to check out their documentation for a full list of supported diagram types. A few that are important to us as developers are of course flowcharts, but there's also sequence diagrams and state diagrams. State diagrams are another thing you should look into as they're a powerful way to represent finite state machines. If you want to try Mermaid.js before installing it, or you want to let a non-developer try it, they can do so using mermaid.live. It's a powerful online tool that allows you to type the diagram out and see the results as you're typing it. Now the best way to learn is by doing. So let's work through an example. We're going to create a very basic flowchart that describes a function that uses echo to output all of the numbers from 0 to 99 and then echoes the word done. To start, we're going to write the word flowchart to indicate that we're creating a flowchart. Then we need to include either TD or LR to indicate that we want the flowchart drawn in the top down or left to right orientation, respectively. For this example, we use top down. Now we need to create the start symbol to indicate where the start of the flowchart is. In mermaid.js, we do this by defining a node, and we use a name that we want to reference that node by and the text we want to have on the symbol enclosed by how we want to render the node. We can name the node using one or more characters. I like using single characters for most flowcharts. I find that when the flowchart gets complicated enough that you're having nodes that use more than single characters, it might be time to break into multiple flowcharts. Start and end symbols use double parentheses to enclose the text, so we can write what's on the screen to generate a start node. Now we need to add our next step, which is to set count to zero. We're going to use the square brackets to indicate that the node is an action. To link these two nodes together, we're going to use hyphen hyphen greater than to define where the arrows should be placed. We have two options for how we can do this. We can either create the definition on a new line, or we can combine the node definitions we currently have with the line. I like the second option because it reduces the line count and it's a little bit easier to read because we can see the definition and where it's going to at the same time. The first option will do better in source control, so that's what I tend to use day to day. Now we need to add the decision that will determine if we're still using the loop. Decisions are defined using the curly braces, and then we'll put the statement we're testing inside the curly braces. To define the inside of the loop, we need to define under what values of count we want to run the loop. This is done by using the pipe symbols after our arrow symbol, like so. Input symbols are done using brackets and forward slashes. Then we can finish up the remainder of the inside of the loop, which includes incrementing the count, and then returning to the decision diamond. To finish this, we'll define what happens when the loop is done and go to the terminating node. Now that you know the basics of creating flowcharts in mermaid.js, you can continue to effectively communicate with your team. So the cool thing about knowing mermaid.js syntax is that it can be used in all kinds of places. GitHub has support for it in its markdown, so you can add a mermaid flowchart to any pull request or comment by starting a code block using the three backticks and then the word mermaid. PHP Storm also has a plugin that allows us to type mermaid syntax and see the output in real time. We can even do it in a scratch file. To recap, flowcharts are an amazing way to communicate algorithms or processes graphically. They can be drawn by hand, drawn using a program, or generated dynamically. We can use the mermaid.js syntax to generate them all over the place. I hope you enjoyed our video. If so, make sure you subscribe, comment, share, and like as it does help others find us. Are there topics you would like to see us cover? Let us know in the comments below or send me a message on Twitter and phpc.social at Scott Keck Warren. We would love to hear how we can help you and it always brightens my day when I hear from a fan. This is Scott Keck Warren for the PHP Architect channel signing off and reminding you to keep watching, keep coding, and keep reading. Thank <music> you.